If you're one of those kids that spends too much time on that darn computer machine, then conventions are a great place to get the recommended amount of human interaction with others who share a similar interest. Or at least, they were. You might have seen some conventions in the news recently, you know the ones like VidCon, Comic-Con, and E3, but did you know there's conventions for all sorts of different things, like coin collecting, pens, and degenerates? The first convention I ever went to was in Arizona called Phoenix Comic-Con. I was 16 years old, and it, no exaggeration, changed my life. I had heard a lot about geek culture online, but Phoenix Comic-Con was the very first time I witnessed it in its fullest. I was a very sheltered kid. It was the first time I'd seen a brony, and a furry, and whatever this is, in the wild. That changes a person. I was told that it was not cool to like geeky things, and as a 16 year old, I tried really hard to make it seem like I didn't secretly like a bunch of geeky things. But people at Comic Con just embraced nerd culture like they didn't care what people thought of them or something. Is that allowed? I guess when I was 16, I was hyper desperate to receive everyone's approval. I was so hyper desperate that while walking around my first convention, I was stressing out that I wasn't in cosplay. Oh, all these pop culture characters are judging me because I'm not wearing any makeup. To this day, I still haven't ever cosplayed, but it looks like a lot of fun. If I did cosplay, I would want to go as this quadrupedic horse. Also, Spark from Pokemon Go. I went to one panel called How to Make Steampunk Weapons, but instead of teaching us how to weld real-life weapons powered by steam, the people on the panel taught us how to paint Nerf guns to make them look like they were powered by steam. And that was, no exaggeration, the most disappointing panel I've ever been to. There was also a panel for bronies, but I was too chicken to go. Did I mention that my grandfather, who I'm named after, got drafted into World War II when he was 18? He fought in a war so I could go to a comic convention and be too nervous to talk to bronies. What a different life we had. At most conventions, people in the expo hall will sell a lot of super cool unlicensed merchandise. Yeah, a lot of artists will sell prints and plushies and oven mitts with characters and titles they probably didn't get the license to sell, but if it's at a convention or on Etsy then for some reason it's okay. I've always felt weird about buying that type of merch. On one hand, you shouldn't be allowed to make money off of someone else's intellectual property without the owner's consent. But on the other hand, look at this cool Bowser wallet, Bowser print, and Bowser bandana that I own. And this body pillow. It's a moral gray area because the people buying this type of merch are the hardcore fans. They know of the property these characters came from, they probably already own licensed merch of the character, the artist isn't claiming to have created the character either, it's a mutual understanding between buyer and seller that we both think Bowser is cool and we just want to buy as much merch as possible. You kind of have to take it on a case by case basis, but let me just say this to get it out there, you're not allowed to sell bootleg dot ones out merch. Phoenix Comic Con actually had to change the name of their convention to Phoenix Fan Fusion because the people at the San Diego Comic Con didn't like that Phoenix was stealing their name, so these conventions that don't care about stealing other people's copyright are forcing others to respect their copyright. Interesting. As some of you may know, since 2012 I have become a little more successful, and in 2019 I got invited to be a guest at Phoenix Fan Fusion, which is my home convention. The really crazy part is the convention put me in the celebrity line, like next to the people where you have to pay for photos and autographs. I didn't charge my fans for anything, so that made my line appear a lot longer than others. And my line was, no exaggeration, right next to Jeff Goldblum's line. I was gonna make eye contact with Jeff Goldblum! Jeff showed up for a couple hours on Saturday, and when he came out from backstage, everyone in his line and my line started wooing and clapping, and even I was like, And then Jeff took a look at my line, then looked at me, and then gave me a nod of approval saying, Not bad, kid. He didn't say it out loud, but I could tell he said it with his eyes. He also said that I looked kind of cute, so <laughs> oh, thanks, Jeff. The first time I went to VidCon, that also, no exaggeration, changed my life. Again. It was the first time I met all these YouTubers that I've been watching for years and, okay, I'll admit, at first I was kind of fanboy-y, but I've gotten completely desensitized meeting other YouTubers and feel no joy anymore. When I meet another YouTuber, I say, oh, you make videos in your bedroom? Me too. People know that you're a bedwetter too, right? No? That's just me then? If you've ever given me something at a convention, then you'll be happy to know that I've kept everything I've ever been given. Unless you're the guy that gave me a plastic baggie full of water and other junk and called it a homemade snow globe. I used to collect snow globes, so it was a nice sentiment, but I didn't want to take it home with me and have it inevitably break and get all the important fan art wet. So I chucked it. And as I'm telling you this, there's some poor kid out there going, Hey, he, 
He's talking about my snow globe. He, he threw it away? And now I feel bad, so... Here, I'll mail this to you and you can get a taste of your own medicine. I don't know why this is such a popular question, but a lot of times people will ask me, what's the weirdest fan interaction you've ever had? I think they think that some of you are cringy. I never have an answer for them because all my fans are super nice. Yeah, someone gave me a bag of water, but that's not weird, that's nice! Okay, I have received fan mail from a prison, which is true, so I guess some of you aren't law-abiding citizens. Going to conventions and meeting fans and being on panels is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't give you a lot of time to really experience the convention. Since 2017, when I would go to a convention, it would mean I was working. I still had a fun time, but I didn't really get to just relax with friends. That is, until I went to a convention last December called MFF, which stands for Midwest Fur Fest. Now, James, did you go to a furry convention? Well, I went with some friends to a furry convention so that I could actually enjoy a convention and not have to work. Although I still got recognized even though I was wearing a disguise. Furries are very touchy people, I've learned. Not touchy as in overly sensitive. Well, some probably are. But they're also literally touchy. Let me tell you where I'm at in my life right now. Last December, I was in an elevator full of furries and... If my grandpa could see me now, he would probably be frowning. Or smiling, I don't know, I don't judge. We were all crowded in, there was a moose breathing down my neck, and we stopped at a floor because more furries wanted to come in. So I backed up to make more room, but I backed up a little too close to the moose, and he grabbed my hips and I went, ah, in my mind, I didn't say it out loud. In real life I went, <laughs> So that was probably the weirdest fan experience I've had, if you were still wondering. I don't know if he was a fan of my YouTube, but he was definitely a fan of my body or he was drunk. I don't know. Again, I don't judge. I was debating on whether or not I should include this story, but I think it would be a good lesson for everyone to hear. Here's my James PSA. This message is for everyone, and especially furries. Don't touch people without their permission. In the moment, I stayed quiet, but that sort of behavior isn't okay and I should have spoken out. Hopefully, most of you are mindful of other people's personal space. However, comma, at least one of you went to prison, so... I don't know. Overall, it was the best ironic trip ever. <laughs> At the end of the day, conventions are a lot of fun, and I really, really miss going to them. And when it's safe to do so again, I recommend you try and go to one you're interested in. And Grandpa, I'm sorry if I disappointed you.